So we've got a viewer from Worthington who wants to revisit the education question, this time focusing on um, K-12 or pre-K to 12. And it's interesting, we, our viewers um, are particularly well informed, they follow what's happening in the legislature, and I'm just going to read part of this viewer's question verbatim. With over 300 bills pertaining to public education in both the House and Senate, with subjects ranging from school start dates to required courses to what students have to be screened for, or tested, and so forth, is there anything left for the local school boards that they're capable of doing without instruction and <laughs> um, interference from the legislature? Um, I think the viewer's got a particular viewpoint on this question. Um, but I think there is a sort of a broader question, which is how do you weigh and, uh, and balance state responsibilities versus local responsibilities? And I'm going to pick on you, Representative Miller, to okay. start with. And what do you, what do you, how do you respond to that viewer's concern? Well, I'm going to respond this way. Sometimes I make this statement, if I could wave my magic wand, right? We all, all as legislators mm -hmm. at some time wish that we had that, and of course we don't. But I am a local control person when it comes to education. I trust the teachers. I trust the administration. I trust the school boards to make those choices. And in Minnesota, I've talked to my school boards and, and superintendents, and they really, and teachers even, they have less and less control over what happens in their school. And that's kind of the, the, the viewer is, is addressing that. I think this is a radical move, and I'm probably going to take many years for this to ever come about, but I, I would like to see block grants that go for gen general education, go to special education, send it to the schools, and say, educate our children. And if they are falling behind in some way or if they are deficient, you address it in that way. We talked off air, and I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit, about special education. Every special education teacher that comes to me, the first thing out of their mouth is cut down on my paperwork. My son has special needs. He's on the, on the lower end of the autism spectrum. And I've talked to his teachers, and, they, and, and I'm, I'm stunned at the amount of time that they have to spend just keeping with their paperwork, much less working with, with my son. So I certainly want to empower these school, these school board members. I've talked to them. Um, this, that person that's watching may actually be a school board member themselves with the way that they're describing this problem. Senator Franzen? I agree. I mean, local controls should, should be the norm here because um, every school district is different. Every local community is different. They know best than we at, at the Capitol from, mm -hmm. from St. Paul. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. The other day I was talking to someone who was saying, uh, who was a, uh, a dietitian um, working for uh, co county health, um, and they were saying how kids don't even get enough time to eat. Like, we prescribe everything. They get, like, a few minutes to eat, not half an hour, an hour, a few minutes to eat. And what are we doing? Kids need to learn, and, and we, we, so, we, you know, we focus on what they need to learn. But if they don't even have time to eat and, and have a little time to unwind, um, we are prescribing way too much. And I agree with the viewer, that, um, the listener, that we, we need to, to kind of um, take a step back. And, and when and we still need the, the accountability there, and I think testing helped, but also we over-test because we, we want to test more because we, we doubt that we, you know, a lot of people may not trust our teachers. I trust our teachers as well. They're going, I mean, that is one of the hardest jobs I think we have in our, in, in our society mm -hmm. and one of the most important ones. Uh, so we should be trusting them. Um, the issue is they are doing more with less. We, you alluded to mental health. Um, kids are going to school with not not enough uh, housing um, or housing instability. They're going, they're hungry. They're going there with so many other issues um, that we need to make sure that we're not just dumping into the schools to fix um, the problems that we, as a society, haven't tackled. And I think the state has. So, a, a so let me follow. Here. Let me follow up on that. And, and you know, the, there's this bill that was moving through the legislature to deal with. I'm not quite sure what its status is. Uh, dealing with some of the special ed paperwork. Um, and there was a task force assigned to do that and identified some things. And I'm expecting, or I would, I'm, I'm thinking from what I've been told, that that may pass. But when, I'm, when we talk about what this viewer's questions are from Worthington, um, I'm just wondering if um, are the various interest groups that are knocking on your doors and saying, you need to put this in the curriculum, you need to do this, you need to do that. I mean, are people willing to sort of, you know, um, hold hands and say, we're willing to put take these things out of the statute and take these things out of the, I mean, those interest groups are there because they're concerned about those issues. And, um, we, you know, we've had anti-bullying mandates. We've had a various, various mandates that have been passed on down to, to school districts. And so the question is, do you, do you create a task force of some sort to see what can be pulled out of the statute? Um, 
how, how do you deal with that? You know, how do you, how do you put that issue in a place where the legislature can realistically pass something that makes makes this, you know, it's not going to fix the entire problem, but makes it at least easier for school boards. So I'll pick on you, Senator sure. Franzen, because we were just talking about it, and then we'll, we'll I regularly meet with my school boards. I represent a few different districts, and I and they all have different needs, but then they also have commonalities. So right mm -hmm. now the one I'm listening to is this cross-subsidy for special ed. All of them are dealing with that mm -hmm. issue. We're, if we don't fund it as a state, if we mandate them to, to mm -hmm. be stuck in paperwork not helping our kids, mm -hmm they're all suffering from that. So it's prioritizing from our standpoint because we have to listen to what the needs of our communities are. Um, and they have their own advocacy groups and, and lobbyists that come to the Capitol, so we listen to them. But at the end of the day, you have to talk to parents and teachers, and constituent services is so important. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, you can talk to a lobbyist, and I was one of them when I used to work at Target. Um, but you also you want to talk to real people. So you, those are the parents who are dealing with the issues of their kids, and, and then you go from there. And sometimes... Um, we can do something, but sometimes good intentions um, go so far uh, that, that it actually um, has unintended consequences, and that's where we see all these mandates. Senator Rare, can you fix this problem for us? Well, again, <laughs> magic wand, right? Um, right. But I, I do think, you know, many of these groups are well-intentioned, and what they're bringing forward, you know, is And it's a real problem. Worthy. That's yeah. why they came to you, right? Exactly. Um, but it, it is. I think too many times we've looked at these things over the years kind of in a vacuum, and you've looked at it and said, okay, this would be great, and we create that mandate, and we pass it on to our school boards, and I've heard it from a number of people. It's taking away from our students' ability to take elective classes, um, whether that's you know a, a calculus class or trigonometry class or a shop class. Um, the things that students want to do, they're unable to do, and just like we said, I trust our teachers, I trust our school boards, and when we do these things, another thing we've done is we've created the paperwork, we create administration needed at the schools, and that's money that's being spent that's not helping in the classroom. And so I do think we should be looking at this in a big picture, backing away so many of these tests. They can give us good uh, criteria, but you know what? Our teachers can give us good information about these kids as well. Um, I don't think we need as many tests. We don't need all of this. We do need to step back a little bit and ask ourselves, is this good or should we back away and let our districts come up with what works? President Purcell, any thoughts on our viewer from Worthington who's concerned about uh, not enough local control? First, for first thing that comes to my mind is that just to put it in a couple words, what we're hearing from my colleagues here is to keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've almost, I think, outsmarted ourselves or tried to. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, what's wrong with the, the exams that the, the teachers, the instructors mm -hmm. give us every week, 10 days when... I mean, some of us came out okay, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, that, it's a matter that, of opinion, I suppose. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we're sitting here talking to other people, so well, we learn something. Right. Uh, I just, I don't understand. And then we would take the Iowa basic skills uh, every year or thereabouts. And uh, I don't even think it was every year back in the day, but uh, in high school maybe it was. But uh, So I agree with my colleagues here. We've, we've kind of gone overboard on the on the exam part of it and let the teachers do the teaching and, and let the students be students. Uh, I, I will add, let's, uh, talking about time and I, students having time, let's make sure they get outside once in a while and get some fresh air. I, I, we've taken that away from children and I know it's different for depending on where you live and I feel very fortunate to live in the north woods of Minnesota. Uh, where we can get outside, but my golly, I'm dragging my grandkids outside every chance I can. And they need that. And in this day and age, they need it a lot. Uh, uh, and it's, it's interesting that you mention that because there's some recent studies that would suggest that there's some pretty significant downsides to the social environment, the electronic social environment. So you're, you're not wrong about that, I don't think, Representative.